I'm here, this is sushi, and uh, this is midnight. I'm not petting sushi for this because this is not a desired behavior. Um, if you, anything you pet your dog for, give it attention for, even if you're yelling, get off me, is rewarding. A little sidebar. These dogs, yes, like to bark at sounds outside of their apartment. They're what we call sound sensitive. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the concept of counter conditioning to stop a dog from reacting to sounds. I'd like the guardian to make a list of all of the sounds. One of the sounds that she said are sound of dogs walking by if she hears kind of the dog collar, uh, people talking outside the door, the neighbors upstairs are, uh, what do they call those, clogger people, and they just like to stamp on stuff on the floor. So there are a lot of things that cause the dogs to react. Now, part of this is, is most likely due to uh, uh, a little bit of cortisol in the dog's blood. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It amplifies everything. It prepares dog us for fight or flight. Um, it's helpful in short bursts, but it's not helpful for long terms and uh, long term situations. And it can amplify things, so it might make the dog more sensitive to sound that normally they wouldn't react to. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can simulate one. And of course, I don't have a trigger that I can actually assign. I would have use my keys, but my keys are down from LA. So basically, whatever it is, you want to make a list of all those sounds. And you might want to recruit the help of your friends. A quick little dog behavior uh, modification tip. What most of us try to do is rehabilitate our dog's behavior in the moment of it happening, which is the worst way to learn anything. A surgeon doesn't open somebody's chest up and learn how to do chest sur uh, heart surgery just by opening it up. What we do is we first read about it in a book, we watch videos, and then we shadow with somebody else who's doing it so I could observe all the individual steps. I learn about all the individual steps on cadavers or on simulates, and then gradually, maybe the next time, I, once I'm prepared, then I might maybe do one of the incisions. And then they critique me and say, oh, you cut that a little bit too long. So this is how we learn in a classroom setting, the easiest level to develop our skill set. Then we gradually start raising it higher and higher until we get to real world situations. They're going to make out evidently. So basically, when you're doing this to your dog, if we wait for a real person to be walking outside, we're caught off guard. We're not ready with our treats, we're not ready with our clicker, and our timing is just horrible. So what I would have you do is enlist the help of some friends. Have one of your friends come over and walk in front of your place. Talk to them on your earbuds so that you can tell them when to make the sound. Walk, stop right outside my door. Okay, that, and it maybe stop too loud and it's too much and the dogs are too worked up. So, okay, we're going to do that again, but stop at half that, at that volume. So you can control the other person. You're in charge of the elements, and so there's no accidental things that are going on, which will slow down your progress. Okay, so I, the last little tip is there's two dogs here. I would do this with each dog separately. I know that's not super convenient, but I would see if you could find somebody who maybe could uh, maybe enlist the help of a dog walker. Have a dog walker walk one of your dogs while your friend comes over. While the other, one of the dogs is out on the walk, your friend is doing this. We're doing the exercise I'm about to show you. Then the dog walker comes and grabs the other dog, and we repeat it. So now the dogs are kind of, you're able to focus on one dog at a time. And you guys are being silly. Okay, since they're not reacting, I'm just going to kind of pantomime and describe this. I think I might be able to do it by a fake knock on the wall. So let's see if I can kind of... So they're all worked up now, and they're ready for somebody to come inside. They're alerting us. Now, the guardian here has been doing what a lot of people do and just simply saying, quiet. Well, if I'm trying to communicate to you, your car's on fire, I'm like, hey, man, your car, shut up. But your car, shut up. But I'm telling you, your car, shut up. Well, I'm going to actually probably talk louder because your car is in danger and you're not listening to me. They think that you're in danger or that whatever's outside is really bad. And so us telling them to be quiet is actually probably going to make the situation worse than better. So what we're going to do for this is we want to basically control the stimulus. The stimulus, in this case, is going to be the knock on this cabinet. Now, I can control the volume by knocking on it very lightly or knocking on it very heavily or knocking on it once or knocking on it multiple times. When I'm doing a counter conditioning exercise, I control the stimulus by either increasing the distance turning down the volume or slowing down the speed, depending on whatever it is. In this case, I'm going to knock very lightly. Now, I have treats that the dogs really like, and I'm going to put myself here. I prefer they don't see it. So, so what I'm doing is I'm, provo I'm provoking the stimulus, the knock, that caused them to react, but I'm doing it very lightly and immediately following it, if the dogs don't react, I'm giving them a reinforcer. So now this 
is an indication that I'm about to get a treat, not something I'm going to bark at. Now this is, I'm doing this and this is, you know, a very, very quick version of this. This is something you probably have to practice three, six, 12 times. There's no accurate number. She might need 25 times. She might need three and that's okay. We all learn at different speeds. And so that was about the same level that I did before. Now they can see me doing that and dogs are smart creatures. So there might be a connection there. That's why if we have our friend outside or in other situations, you might be able to record the audio of it and play it on your phone where again, you control all the elements. Now, if your dog's being, uh, so right now we're about 25 feet away from the door. If we were right next to the door and somebody knocked on it, they might freak out because they're too close. So then you would move further away. Now I have two tests and I have a colleague, Laura, yes, um, who doesn't like me asking uh, dogs to sit. I ask a dog to sit when I'm doing these exercises as an indicator. If I ask the dog to sit, let's say there's a dog nearby and they don't like dogs. I ask the dog to sit, these dogs to sit. If they don't sit while that dog's nearby, I don't interpret that as them saying, no, I, I'm being defiant, I don't wanna sit. I interpret that in their way of saying, I don't feel comfortable sitting next to that dog over there. So what I would do is move the dogs five feet away and ask again to sit. If they won't sit or won't take the treat that you know they will take and they know how to sit, you're probably too close to the stimulus. You wanna be as close as you can, but not so close that it's debilitating and the dogs cannot perform. Once you find that distance, and that distance may ebb and flow, um, and maybe uh, uh, a light knock at the door, you need to be 20 feet away, jingling tags, maybe we need to be 30 feet away. The idea is eventually we collapse that distance, but we go at our dog's pace. So, and now they're not knocking at all. Now we're gonna throw a wild card into it, uh, now we're going to have the guardian uh, who's filming us is she's going to knock on the window over there and that's they're not going to see me knock. So we'll see if we get a different spot. Just knock lightly, please. So you saw that. That was a reaction, but not a strong enough reaction for the dog to react. So I did give a treat. We're going to go ahead and do that just a little bit louder. This time I didn't turn my head. We are counter conditioning the, the, the response from the dog. And so make a list of all the things, all the sounds and work on them one at a time. And that way you want to basically, we call it exhausting or extinguishing, I guess is the word. Uh, <laughs> extinguish the behavior. Now right there, what I did is call it something called a positive interrupter, a long kissing sound. You could also say beep, 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 high pitched voice. If you say it in a cadence of three, uh, it kind of bridges language of gaps. So basically if the dogs go and start barking, go ahead and knock loudly. <laughs> it? Yes. So I made the positive interrupter. It interrupted the behavior. They come to me. I gave them something else to do. And then I gave them a reward. Now, if you have, while you're doing this, you don't want to have them barking and practicing barking while people are outside your door. So if you know every day at like four o'clock, it's really busy out there, well, maybe play KCRW or a classical station here at a volume that muffles that sound. Um, some people actually get a little snake or whatever that thing that goes at the bottom of the door, which also helps muffle the sound. And so we want to do, that's called maintenance. We don't want the dog to practice the old behavior while we're introducing and helping them practice the replacement behavior because that's what we, every time they practice the old behavior, you kind of undo a little bit of your work. So make a list of all the triggers, the sounds that they react to, get a recording of them or enlist friends or people in the building or whatever it is who can help you with that and gradually uh, do the stimulus at low enough level where the dog doesn't react, give it a treat immediately after, repeat that a couple times, and then raise the stimulus intensity a little bit and try again. And if you raise it and they react, then go back a level to a previous level of success and practice there. The whole point of this is the quality of your practice, not the speed of how quickly you go through it. So if your dog is reactive, you, there are things you can do to help. Maybe we take the dog out for some exercise first, come back, let it recover for 10 minutes, and then practice. So now we took off that top level of energy, a little bit easier for them to deal with. Um, in some capacities, it is helpful to do work with both dogs together, but I think in this case, it's gonna be easier to work with them separately. This is my buddy Midnight. This is little Sushi. And this is how you can use counter conditioning to stop dogs from barking or reacting to sounds.